Hey, Charles Hoffman here from Plugin Alliance. In this video, you'll learn what an equalizer or EQ does and how to use an EQ to improve the quality of your music. We'll be looking at common controls found on EQs, different types of filters, various EQ designs, and some tips to get the most out of the EQ you're using. All of the EQs in this video are included in Plugin Alliance's Mega Plan. You can demo these EQs for 30 days by starting a free Mega Plan trial using the link below. To understand how an EQ works and what it does, we need to start with the basics. What is sound? You probably have a general idea of what sound is and know that you hear sounds with your ears. On a technical level, every sound that you hear is a series of high and low pressure wave fronts that move through the air and sometimes other mediums like metal or water. Digitally, you'll see audio waveforms depicted as squiggly lines with peaks and troughs. The peaks represent high pressure wave fronts, while the troughs represent low pressure wave fronts. If we look at a sine wave, which is a basic wave shape, you can see a smooth transition from neutral air pressure to high air pressure, to neutral air pressure, to low air pressure, and then back to neutral. What you're looking at here is one complete wave cycle. If I generate a sine wave, you can hear it has a clean and round tone. As I drop the pitch, the sound becomes deeper and lower. As I raise the pitch, the sound becomes clearer and higher. Adjusting the pitch of a sound alters the number of wave cycles you hear per second. For example, at a frequency rate of 440 wave cycles per second, a sine wave sounds like this. By no coincidence, 440 hertz corresponds to the musical note value A. If I double the frequency, we land on another A. Every musical note ranging from A to G corresponds to a set frequency. I don't want to get too deep into music theory here, but the main takeaway is that low frequency values have a deep and warm tone, while high frequency values have an airy and bright tone. Most sounds that you hear are much more complex than a sine wave and contain frequency content throughout the frequency spectrum. I'm running a drum kit through 3Body Technologies Kirchhoff EQ, which has a built-in frequency spectrum analyzer. Compared to the sine wave that I was running through it before, there's a lot more going on now. Each instrument, a part of the drum kit, lives within its own frequency range. When I solo each kit piece, you can see and hear this. An EQ lets you modify the volume of different frequency ranges and control the overall character of a sound. For example, if I boost the low-end frequency range using the Kirchhoff EQ, you'll hear the kick drum start to become boomier and more present. Cutting the level of the mid-range will cause the snare to become less snappy and apparent. while boosting the top end will brighten the hi-hats and make them sound airier. Think of an EQ as a character shaping tool that allows you to add or remove certain characteristics from your sound. By boosting frequency content, you can add desirable qualities to your sound, and by cutting certain frequencies, you can remove undesirable qualities. EQs split the incoming audio signal into different frequency ranges using filters. For example, a three band EQ would split the incoming audio signal into a low band, mid band, and high band. 
At this point, you can control the level of each band using a gain control. Band's frequency control lets you modify the center frequency of the band, moving it up or down the frequency spectrum. A band's Q knob adjusts the frequency range around the center frequency that's affected by gain changes. The range of frequencies affected by a band is referred to as bandwidth. Some EQs let you choose the type of filter that each band uses. Common filter types include low shell filters, low pass filters, bell filters, notch filters, band pass filters, high pass filters, and high shell filters. Quite often there's an icon to indicate what the filter's doing to the sound. A low shell filter affects frequency content to the left side of a band's center frequency. Low pass filters or high cut filters isolate the low end of your sound based on the cutoff frequency you've selected. Above the cutoff frequency, the sound is rejected from passing through the filter. You can use a bell filter to pinpoint certain frequency ranges that you want to boost or cut with precision. For finer control, you'll want to use a narrow bandwidth. Notch filters apply a steep cut at a band's center frequency. You can sweep this across the frequency spectrum as a creative effect, or use a narrow bandwidth to remove resonance. Bandpass filters essentially solo the frequency content affected by the band. They reject everything outside the band's scope. You'll often use a bandpass filter to remove low end and top end from vocal doubles or backup vocals. One day if you're passing me, middle of eleven street, couple strangers in between. One day if you're passing me, middle of eleven street, couple strangers in between. There are also high pass filters that isolate the top end of your audio signal. These are sometimes referred to as low cut filters. To avoid getting high pass and low pass filters confused, remember this. Low pass filters allow low end content to pass through, and high pass filters allow high end content to pass through. One day if you're passing me, middle of 11th street, couple strangers in between. One day Finally, we have high shelf filters that work the same as low shelf filters, but affect the right side of a band's center frequency.
Certain EQs provide more advanced control, in some cases unique to that particular device, but if you know how to use the controls we've covered, you're in good shape. You should be able to walk into any studio, identify an EQ, and know how to manipulate the sound running through it. There are different types of EQs, including graphic EQs, parametric EQs, minimum phase EQs, linear phase EQs, dynamic EQs, and passive EQs. Graphic EQs let you boost or cut the level of predefined frequency ranges or bands using a series of sliders or knobs. The SPL EQ Ranger Plus is a good example of a graphic EQ. Graphic EQs are simple to use because they don't provide an overwhelming number of controls. If you've never used an EQ before, learning how to operate a graphic EQ is a good place to start. When it comes to hardware, graphic EQs are cheaper to manufacture than parametric EQs, which we'll take a look at in a moment, meaning you'll often find graphic EQs in home studios. In the digital world, manufacturing costs don't come into play in the same way, so many people opt for a more feature-rich type of EQ called a parametric EQ. Parametric EQs allow you to adjust the center frequency of each band. To reiterate, graphic EQs have bands with a predefined center frequency, while parametric EQs have bands with adjustable center frequencies. Every EQ that you use will fall into one of these two categories. For the most part, you'll likely find yourself working with parametric EQs in your digital audio workstation since they provide more precise control over the character of your sounds. Dynamic EQs are another type of EQ that you'll come across. One great example of a dynamic EQ is the BX Digital V3, which I often use for surgical mixing and mastering purposes. Each one of a dynamic EQ's bands has a threshold level. Based on the settings you've selected, a dynamic EQ can affect a frequency band in one of four ways. As an audio signal rises above a band's threshold, its level is attenuated. You can use this approach to reduce undesirable sound characteristics sticking out of your mix. When a signal jumps above a band's threshold, its level is boosted. As an audio signal falls below a band's threshold, its level is boosted. Applying this type of processing will help make the level of quiet and desirable sound characteristics more present. As an audio signal falls below a band's threshold, its level is attenuated. You might want to take this processing approach to hide undesirable sound characteristics within your mix. The benefit of using a dynamic EQ versus a static EQ with set gain values is that dynamic EQs tend to be less invasive. If you only want to boost the low end of your mix when the kick plays, you should use a dynamic EQ. Whenever the kick hits, the low end of your entire mix will get a brief gain boost before returning to normal. In contrast, if you apply gain boost to your low end using a static EQ, your low end will remain boosted even when your kick isn't playing, which could throw off the balance of your mix if it makes your bass guitar sound too heavy. As a rule of thumb, reach for a dynamic EQ when solving momentary sound characteristic issues, and a static EQ when you want to make gain changes that maintain over time. In the same way that EQs can be classified as graphic, parametric, or semi-parametric, they can also be classified as either minimum phase or linear phase. Playing around with the level of different frequency ranges affects their phase relationship with one another, which can lead to issues like comb filtering, the collapse of your stereo image, time smearing, which leads to transients losing their sharpness, and either complete or partial phase cancellation that causes your mix to lose its punch and impact. Minimum phase EQs attempt to minimize these phase-related effects while still providing you with the ability to alter the level of different frequency ranges. They don't completely eliminate phase-related effects, but that's okay because the results typically sound natural and musical. Minimum phase EQs are suitable for individual tracks, buses, and anything that you're happy adding a little bit of color to. Linear phase EQs prioritize the phase relationships between bands above everything else. They aim to provide you with the cleanest and most transparent sound possible. Linear phase EQs are typically used to balance audio levels when mastering, 
especially when the goal is to maintain the sound of a mix as it's prepared for distribution. Due to the way linear phase EQs work under the hood, they tend to introduce latency to your project, meaning you'll probably want to avoid using them in a live playback context. Some EQs provide you with the option to toggle between a minimum phase and linear phase mode, so that's something to keep your eyes open for. I'm going to run you through the process of EQing vocals within the context of a mix. Let's listen to what we're working with here and then make a game plan. There's nothing about these vocals that I necessarily want to remove, like top end harshness or anything like that. However, I do want certain vocal characteristics to cut through the mix more. I'd love if the vocals cut through the mid range of the synths, and if they had more of an airy feeling in the top end to give them that shimmering pop sound. What I'm going to do is apply a boost around 1 to 3 kHz using a wide bandwidth to help highlight my vocals. To give my vocals a glossy pop aesthetic that you're probably familiar with, I'm just going to boost the top end a little bit, starting around 5 to 8 kHz using a high shelf filter. Let's take a listen to the vocals, first without the EQ applied, and then with it applied. As you can hear, the vocals sound much more polished and put together, having made some very minor changes. A little goes a long way, especially when EQing something as delicate as a vocal performance. You probably noticed that I made all those EQ changes without soloing my vocals, and I did that on purpose. EQing a sound when it's soloed doesn't really make sense, because nobody listening to your music is going to hear a soloed version of that song element. All the sounds in your mix interact with one another when they play back, so if you EQ a soloed version of your vocals and then add them into your full mix, they're probably not going to sound the same. They could end up clashing with guitars, synths, and other mid-range elements. As a best practice, EQ tracks when listening to your mix as a whole. Plugin Alliance's Mega Plan gives you instant access to over 180 plugins, including all the EQs from this video. Click the link below to start a free Mega Plan trial and demo all of Plugin Alliance's products for 30 days. This is the first video in a series of EQ tutorials, so stay tuned for more knob twisting fun. We're going to look at a bunch of different mixing and mastering techniques using EQs that will help you elevate your productions. Make sure to subscribe to the Plugin Alliance YouTube channel for more content like this, and like this video if you found it helpful. Thanks for watching.